so today's uh, next lecture is of science 2 so in the previous lecture we have already started with the next chapter of science 2 that is the 17th chapter introduction to biotechnology so today i'm going to continue with the same chapter introduction to biotechnology i am mrs yasmin sheik from mithanagar mps english secondary school so very good morning to all of you and pay attention and listen carefully try to understand the chapter okay so uh, the name of the chapter is introduction to biotechnology what is biotechnology you must have heard the same biotechnology so uh, in today's world this is very important branch of science so uh, it is a technology in which the uh, life processes are used the life processes are studied and it is used in, for the industrial purpose or for our human benefit for example you must have heard the production of antibiotics the antibiotics which are given to us that is nothing but the this we are getting from this process called as biotechnology right so production of vaccines production of antibiotics then uh, you must have heard the word tissue culture so all these are the types of uh, biotechnology uh, which we will understand uh, how what is biotechnology and how it is used but before that we need to understand the different uh, life processes or the uh, human animal processes which are uh, going on in the body and uh, then we will proceed and we will understand about biotechnology <clears throat> okay so in the previous lecture uh, you must have studied about uh, the organization of the body you know what is cell what is it cell is the smallest structural and the functional unit of living organism right the smallest part of the body maybe plant body or animal body the smallest part of the body is called as the cell right it is the structural and the functional unit of the body now in case of unicellular organisms like amoeba you know all the functions are performed by the organelles of that single cell right but however most of the organisms are multicellular right so there are various processes brought about in their body so group of cells they come together and they form a uh, they form a part or that is called as tissue right so as we are familiar we know that as the like when you combine uh, in uh, if i'll try to explain you in terms of la uh, language for example if you are studying right from nursery is when you started studying so you know that first we study alphabets isn't it so the different alphabets they come together to form words then different words they combine to form sentences then there are sentences form chapters and then many many chapters they come together to form a textbook in the same way the plants and the animal bodies are also organized as the plants don't move from one place to another they don't need much energy and uh, but the uh, so they are not that much organized but the animal bodies are much organized right <coughs> so uh, the first the smallest unit is called as the cell then many cells they come together to form tissues then tissues they come together to form organ then a different organs they form organ system and the organ system forms the uh, organism or the human or the animal or human body right so what is tissue a group of cells having the same origin same structure and same function is called as the tissue Right. Try to understand. The uh, tissues are a group of cells having the same origin, means same type of cells having same structure and performing same kind of function is called as tissues. So today we are going to study in details about animal tissues. Now. For example, in the body of animal, different organs they come together to perform a specific function. Now, organs like the lungs and trachea, with the help of contraction and relaxation of some muscles, 
they uh, bring about the function of respiration isn't it now these organs trachea lungs and some uh, muscles they are involved in the process of respiration so uh, now in this respiratory system also there are different types of tissues which are involved right so in lungs there are different types of tissues present in trachea there are different types of tissues present and uh, the muscles which are uh, helping in relaxation and contraction they are different types of tissues right so depending on the uh, functions of the tissues so different tissues perform different functions so depending on their functions the tissues are classified into four main types so basically first they are classified if uh, broadly if you see the tissues are classified into two types that is simple tissues and complex tissues so uh, what are simple tissues the tissues which are made up of only one type of cells those are called as simple, simple tissues the example is epithelial tissues of animals this we will study what are epithelial tissues so this epithelial tissues of animals are the example of simple tissues this you have to remember and also there are complex tissues now if uh, the simple tissues are made up of only one type of cells what can be the definition of complex tissues obviously the tissues which are made up of more than one type of cells are called as complex tissues right it is made up of more than one type of cells so are uh, the example of complex tissues are also there but we are not concerned about them right so be broadly the tissues are classified into two types simple tissues and complex tissues simple tissues are made up of only one type of cells while the complex tissues are made up of more than one type of cells and today we are going to study in details about animal tissues and animal tissues are basically classified into four types which you can see here these four type of animal tissues are epithelial tissues connective tissues muscle tissues and nervous tissues right out of this out of this the epithelial tissues are simple type of tissues while connective tissue muscle tissue and nervous tissues are complex tissues in animals Now here you can see the classification animal tissues are classified into epithelial tissues muscular tissue connective tissue and nervous tissue now uh, quickly i'll tell you uh, the different types of uh, i'll tell you i'll explain you the classification of animal tissue so epithelial tissues are classified into squamous epithelium cuboidal epithelium columnar epithelium epithelium and glandular epithelium while the muscular tissues here you can see they are classified into striated muscular non striated and striated while the connective tissues are classified into many types they are alveolar dense germen then epithelial uh, bone blood, lymph these are all uh, connective of tissues the nervous tissues they bring about the function of uh, the nervous tissues are made up of the nerve cells that is called as neurons so you can see the function of each epithelial tissues they help in the protection by covering the body then muscular tissue they help in the movement and locomotion connective tissue helps in binding and support of the transport uh, sorry binding support and transport and the nervous tissues they helps to bring about control and coordination right so uh, this is the detailed classification of animal tissues but today we are concerned uh, only about the structure and the function of the epithelial tissues okay let us see what are epithelial tissues these are the protective coverings in the animal body and they are called as epithelial tissues so in order to protect the animal body 
the body is covered with a layer of uh, tissue and that tissue is called as the epithelial tissue cells in this tissue are closely packed and form continuous layers right so uh, you will find that these epithelial tissues the cells will be closely packed to each other and they form the continuous layers and they are the protective covering this is important then any material that enters the body first encounters epithelial tissue right so uh, any material uh, which comes in contact with the body first it has to come in contact with the epithelial tissue if the epithelial tissue allows that uh, external material to go inside the body then only it can go otherwise it, it is not allowed to enter the body the cells of the epithelial tissue are separated from the cells of the other underlying tissues by a fibrous membrane right so the skin which you can see all over our body that is a uh, epithelial tissue if you will uh, observe that skin under the uh, lens if you are having a lens so if you observe that skin under the lens you will find squarish and pentagonal shape of cells very small cells which are closely packed to each other so this and they are present in many layers right and after this epithelial layers the tissue these uh, epithelial uh, layers are separated from the underlying tissue by fibrous membrane the fibrous membranes of membrane are present or the fibrous tissues are present beneath these epithel epithelial tissues right and also uh and what do you think what keeps the various organs and organ systems separate from each other can you answer the you know that uh, our body are all made up of different types of organs and the different types of organs they form different organ systems for example we have digestive system so it starts from mouth it starts with this and then it comes to stomach small intestine large intestine that way this is a elementary canal made up of different organs right now this digestive system is separated from the other system of the body now the other system can be uh, for example the skeletal system all the bones of our body are is are called as skeletal system right and also the circulatory system heart and the blood vessels these make circulatory system so all these systems and you can take the example of uh, excretory system so all these uh, systems are separated from each other the organs are separated from each other and these uh, these separations are also brought about by the uh, epithelial tissues right these epithelial tissues they separate all the organs they separate all the uh, organ systems from one uh, each other okay then uh, where do you find these epithelial tissues you can say the example the skin then a uh, mucous layer of the mouth cavity the inner surface of the blood vessels then walls of the alveoli you know what are alveoli they are present in the lungs the basic uh, unit or the functional unit of the lungs are called as alveoli so uh, in all these parts uh, these are made up of epithelial tissues okay so uh, let us study in detail so all the different types of epithelial tissues so uh, broadly first i'll tell you these epithelial tissues have been uh, classified into six types the first is squamous epithelial tissue the next is stratified epithelium then glandular epithelium then polymenar epithelium ciliated epithelium and cuboidal epithelium so depending upon their structure uh these are classified and also they perform different types of uh, types of functions okay you can see here the squamous epithelial tissues you can see on the screen how they are tightly packed to each other they are somewhat squarish or pentagonal in shape and also you can see uh, the nucleus is present in each and every cell right so 
you can see here now let us see where they are located the structure first you'll see the structure these are thin small flat cells and they form semi permeable membrane right so these are thin small and flat kind of cells and semi permeable means uh, they allow some of the materials from outside the body to enter inside and uh, some of the materials are not allowed to enter semi permeable permeable means the permission only some uh, things are allowed to enter then where it is located this squamous epithelium type of cells are present in the inner surface of the mouth we can see here they are present on the inner surface of the mouth then esophagus and blood vessels and alveolar right you can imagine all those parts the inner surface of the mouth you can uh, imagine you can feel uh, the all right now also all of you can open your mouth and uh, you can touch uh, with your finger the squamous epithelial type of tissue which are present on the inner surface of the mouth then uh, they are also present in the esophagus you know what is esophagus it is the part of the alimentary canal mouth continues into its esophagus then uh, blood vessels also the blood vessels are made up of squamous epithelial tissues and the alveoli what are the functions now what is the function of squamous epithelium can you uh, imagine so selective transport of substances right so uh, some th the things which are to be taken in and some things which are not allowed to go inside that is decided by the squamous epithelium tissue so selective transport of substances is the function of squamous epithelial tissues right so this was the first type of epithelial tissues now uh, let us see the next type that is stratified epithelium tissues now uh, from the name itself you can uh, follow stratified means the tissues which are present in layers you can see uh, there we cells or these tissues are present in many layers so uh, that is why it is called as the stratified epithelium tissues okay so structure the stratified epithelium tissues they are present in many layers of cells right as you can see here so many layers are present which afterwards continue with the cellular tissue that is blood right so stratified epithelial tissues they are all if they are the same compactly uh, they are also thin flat and are very compactly uh, attached and all they are present in many layers and where it is located outer layer of the skin right so uh, now being a science student you should know the skin which we see all over our body or not only on a human body also on animals all the skin which is present on the outer body those are nothing but the stratified epithelial tissues right what is the function now uh, you can also say the function what is the function of your skin it is the prevention of wearing of organs means it helps in the protection of the internal organs right and also uh, it protects from the injury to the internal organs right the prevention of wearing of organs and protection of the organs is the function of the stratified epithelial epithelium tissues so these are present in layers so that the uh, internal organs are protected uh, properly and if uh, some so some injury is there so the injury is uh, happens to the stratified epithelium and then it is recovered so if uh, the little bit the body is hurt so uh, it is only to the upper layer that is uh, the only the skin is affected and the internal organs are protected then the next type is glandular epithelium tissues
Now you can see, you can see the structure of these cells. These are glandular epithelium. Right? So the cells contain vesicles. Now from the name you can make out glandular. That means it is made up of gland. Right? So some kind of gland or some, uh, the, these cells are such that it consists of some kind of secretory material. So cells contain vesicles packed with secretory material. So you can see here, see here, these are some kind of vesicles we are present in the cells. So these vesicles consist of the secretory material. So it can be, uh, the secretory material can be uh, different. Uh, it can be sweat, right? Now skin out of, uh, from skin we can feel the sweat. The sweat, uh, it comes out of the skin. So that means the skin, uh, sweat is secreted from the uh, epithelial tissues. So that is glandular. Some special type of glandular epithelial tissues are there with, which does the secretion of uh, sweat, oil, mucus, etc. And it is present in the inner layer of the skin. Right? So, uh, first the stratified epithelium is present and below that stratified epithelium there are glandular epithelium which does the function of secretion of the sweat and oil. You must have seen uh, even if you wash your hair uh, after some time you can yeah, after some time you find that uh, your hair becomes oily that means the sebum is secreted or uh, the oil is secreted in your uh, head and that is done by glandular epithelial tissues also secretion of mucus inside your nose uh, is done by the glandular epithelium tissues so these are elongated cells which contains vesicles. Now the next are columnar epithelial tissues. From the na name itself, you can tell me the shape of the cells. Yes, students. Yes, so you can recognize uh, columnar epithelium. That means uh, the cells of these type of tissues are columnar in shape. Columnar means uh, elongated, long. Yes, like this. So they are long cells with the nucleus on it and they are also compactly packed. Let us see the structure. Column like tall cells, then upper free surface bears folds made up of these cells at places of absorption, right? So where there is a function of absorption, so uh, at that place these columnar cells uh, seems to be folded, right? They are so much compactly uh, uh, arranged that their folds can be seen. Now, where they are located, they are located on the inner surface that is mucosa of the intestine, right? So the inner lining of the intestine is made up of these polyvinyl epithelial tissues and also the inner lining of the elementary canal. Now, uh, when they are present in the inner lining of the intestine and elementary canal, you can say the function also. What is the function? Secretion of the digestive juice and absorption of the nutrients is the function of these columnar epithelial tissues, right? So, uh, in the pancreas, the gallbladders, uh, so we know that all the digestive uh, juices are secreted in this part. So, uh, the cells of these pancreas and gallbladder and also uh, the cells of the inner lining of the intestine, it uh, secretes the digestive juice, uh, juices we, uh, as we have studied the digestive system. Is that the different types of digestive juices are there? Uh, amylase and protease and uh, the uh, digestive juice which helps in the uh, breaking of fatty acids. So all these types of uh, digestive juices are secreted by this polyminal epithelial tissues. And also absorption of the nutrients. You know that the food is completely digested uh, in which part of the elementary canal? Yes, small intestine, right? So the food is completely digested when it enters into small intestine. So these columnar cells, it helps in the absorption is of these nutrients, uh, which is completely digested and it takes these nutrients to the blood, right? And then we get the energy.
so this absorption of the nutrient from the digestive food is also done by columnar epithelial tissues and the next is ciliated epithelium tissues again from the you will understand that these kind of epithelial tissues they are also a long elongated columnar shaped uh, and they are having a uh, projection called as cilia as we are ciliated animals isn't it we have paramecium with the cilia so that way hair like projections are present on these epithelial tissues see here you can see this hair like projections so can you imagine what is the function of these type of tissues let us see what is the structure it is a pre surface of the cells bears my new hair like process right where it is located in the inner surface of the respiratory right and the inner surface of the respiratory what is the respiratory tract it starts from nostrils right and uh, there is a cilia then uh, it enters into the lungs so all this respiratory tract consists of ciliated epithelium tissues and the function is to push the mucus and air forward to keep the air passage free right it pushes the mucus and it pushes the air forward it pushes the air into the lungs so that we can breathe conveniently so uh, that is the function of the ciliated epithelial tissues to push the air and mucus in the respiratory tract then the next is cuboidal epithelial epithelium tissues so uh cuboidal so they are cubic in shape they also have a nucleus in them and So the cells are cuboid. Then location, they are located in the tubules of the kidney and salivary gland. Right there, they are located. They are located in the tubules of the kidney. You know what? Ah, uh, uh, what is the cell of the kidney called? Nephron. Right. Nephron is the structural and the functional unit of the kidney. Here, uh, the urine is formed. Isn't that all the uh, blood? Uh, it comes. It enters into the kidney, and the blood is cleaned, and all the toxic material is absorbed into the kidney. And this work is done by the nephrons, right? So these, uh, there are about uh, millions of nephrons in each kidney, and they uh, absorb the toxic material. So uh, in that here, these cuboidal cells are present in the nephron. and also they are present in the salivary gland now where the salivary glands are present these are present uh, beneath our tongue and continuously we secrete the saliva in our mouth so that those are uh, nothing because of the cuboidal epithelial tissue <coughs> so what are the functions so reabsorption of useful material is here uh, reabsorption of the useful material from urine and secretion of the saliva are the functions of cuboidal cells now in uh, now in nephrons what happens is all the uh, now uh, all the toxic material is enters into the uh, henle's loop and all the other parts of the Uh, nephron, but here in some part of the nephron, in some part of the nephron, these uh, uh, useful nutrients or whatever is required for the body, it should not be thrown out of the body, right? So the carefully reabsorption that of that useful material is taken from the urine, and that is done by cuboidal epithelial tissues. Then secretion of the saliva. so uh, in mouth the saliva is secreted from the cuboidal epithelial tissues right so uh, these were about the, this was the detailed uh, about the location structure and function of different types of epithelial tissues
who will again revise and let us revise and try to uh, learn the names of the different types of epithelial tissues so the first one was squamous epithelium this is the squamous epithelium uh, tissue the next is the stratified epithelium then glandular epithelium polyminar epithelium ciliated epithelium and cuboidal epithelium right so these are the different types of epithelial tissues which we have studied today and they are uh, they perform the different functions in our body some perform the function of reabsorption some perform the function of secretion uh, some uh, these are ciliated they clear the ditch for respiration so in this way a group of cells that means these these tissues they perform different types of functions in our body so i hope all of you have followed uh, this much part of the chapter so uh, i want you that uh, all of you should read the chapter whatever is taught uh line by line so that you understand the chapter more properly and also uh the different types of questions which are asked uh, based on this topic is explain in details all types of epithelial tissues so when you are explaining this kind of uh, question so explain includes everything you need to draw the diagram and uh, you need to write the location structure and function of each and every type of epithelial tissues also sometimes the short answer questions are asked uh, that or fill in the blanks or the objective type questions are also asked or it is only asked write the function of the glandular epithelial tissue or write the function of any one kind of tissue is asked so at that time uh, when it is only one mark question or you need to write only the function of that specific Uh, epithelial tissue sometimes the location is asked right so dash kind of epithelial tissues are present in esophagus so uh, you should know that so such kind of one mark question is also asked on this topic and sometimes detailed uh, question uh, explaining the detailed structure and function of the different types of epithelial tissues so uh, your assignment is to uh, write this down and also you should know the diagrams draw a diagram of all types of epithelial tissues right so uh, because you should know the structure and the shape so uh, do this homework of uh, drawing all the diagrams of all types of epithelial tissues and then explaining them in details so this is it i hope all of you have followed all the types of uh, tissues animal tissue epithelial tissues right okay uh, so i have finished i'll stop here if anyone is having any question uh, they may ask